Hello, in this video, I am going to show you buttons. So button is, I think you know what button is, something that you usually click on, but that's not really the point of this video to be able to click on buttons. Obviously, you can implement whatever functionality you want, link it with some you know, JavaScript, jQuery, potentially backend with PHP, for example, whatever you want. This is just the front end component that is a button that Bootstrap provides. So a basic button, will look like this in Bootstrap. And let's say if you have a type of button, and it could have a type of submit, for example, it could be, you know, inside a form, that's fine. You you know, you can wrap it up and, you know, do extra stuff as you want to. And for it to be a Bootstrap button, you need a couple of classes. You need BTM, and then you need basically the theme class. So I'm gonna put success. And I'm also going to put an ID here. This is optional. We're going to be using this later in the video just to be able to detect clicking via JavaScript. I just think that's a cool thing to know as well. I'm going to say click me. And if I save that, we get this button. So it is green and it doesn't do anything. Like I said, you can make it into a submit button. You can actually make a anchor tag into a button as well which we're going to be doing later in this video and link that however you want so i'll provide a link to this page which shows you all the button stuff we're going to cover pretty much all of it now but obviously i won't you know be covering all these different little you know themes i've just covered the success one and i'll use a few others as well just to vary it up but you can see all the different ways of doing it another way of creating a button is to make an outline button so when you put the theme what you put is btn dash outline dash and then the theme type so it could be primary it could be info it could be success in this case and i'm just going to say outline button apart from that its functionality is the same refresh we get an outline button now when we hover over it it goes to the primary theme the color which in this case is green for success and again all of this is covered, you know, here. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is how to create a large button. So to do a large button, all you do, it could be any type of button. It could be any theme. It could be outline, not outline. It could be an input button, an anchor button, all stuff I am going to show you. It could be a button inside of like a button group, which is a separate video, which I'll be doing as well, wherever you want. All you do is here you put btn dash lg so for large and that's it and i'll show you the other size while i'm you know doing sizes and i need to get rid of this id you should only ever have one id that's the same plus yeah we don't need it okay so okay we need one more i'll copy it again just because i've removed that thing now and the other size is SM for small. So the only two button sizes, technically three, and I'll explain that in a second. So large is slightly bigger, small is slightly smaller. So I'll look at the three sizes, large, small, and the regular, normal, or medium, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna show you is a block level button. So again, we can copy and paste this. And you can keep the size, the size doesn't matter. I'm going to remove it just for the purpose of this and for, to put a blackly I'm going to leave it just to show that the block level element and the sizing of small or large do, can be used you know at the same time because so block level sort of is sizing as well so you just put btn dash block not clock I'm going to say block level button for refresh that's what we get so basically the actual button will fill the entire width of its parent container in this case is this you know div which has which spans 12 columns so yeah so that's what it does if i was to put six for example this is half the grid size it now only spans that much so if i go back and this will always span its parents full width as you can see when it is resizing so you'll see buttons like this especially when it goes down to you know mobile sizes you know instead of having loads of buttons on the same line this makes it easy to have one big button on a single line 
Look, so that's a block level button. And what about? Yeah, okay, so next I'm gonna show you the disabled button. So what I'm gonna do is I'll get rid of sizing. I'll get rid of block. Again, you can use these. I'm also gonna get rid of this. I'm actually gonna put a different theme color. I'm gonna put primary just you know to vary it up a bit. And I'm gonna put disabled disabled button and for this what we are gonna do is we've got BTM, we've got BTM primary, we need a class of disabled as well. And we're also gonna put a tab index. Right, yes, and right of negative one. I'll explain that in a second. We're gonna put a roll of button. It's best to put these rolls as well for all the others. And it's also recommended to have an area disabled for, you know, sort of disability readers so they can detect, you know, basically, you know, is it disabled or I'll say for put area disabled and I'm gonna put true. Uh, this needs to be equals. There we go. True. And I think that's it. So if I save it, refresh, there we go. This is not clickable like the others. Like I said, they don't do anything because you can program them wherever you want. But this doesn't have that functionality anymore. So it's a great way of having a disabled button. So that tab thing. So if I press tab, it selected this one press it again it goes to the next one to the next one to the next one unless you you know change the tab index order and if you click it again click it one more time you would think it goes to the disable button but it goes back to you know because there's no more elements it goes to the url and then you'll go back onto the pet you know all the other uh, buttons and you eventually get back onto the page but it skips this so that is great as well the next thing i want to show you is an active button so let me, I'll just copy and paste this one. And the active button, I'm going to put a new theme of danger. And put a class of active. I'm going to put a data toggle. And you could use this for the other as well, depending on you know, their functionality. If they're taking it to a, you know, another page, doesn't really need it. I'm going to put auto complete. Uh, off for this toggle and I'm going to put area pressed again just for disability readers is going to be equal to true and I'm going to say this is an active toggle button if I refresh it is toggle so if I press it it has now sort of gone a lighter colour if I press it again it's a darker colour so it toggles on and off the benefit of this actually, let me, I think it might be a little easier to see what's happening if I do an outline button. So, cause it's already toggled, it's, you know, filled in. If I press it, it's no longer filled in. There we go, so that is a toggle button. So in case you have some sort of feature on your website and you can toggle it on and off, you could use this for example, and it's a way of showcasing to the user that it's the, you know, the toggle is on or it is off. The last thing that I really just want to show you is that we've just been doing this with buttons, but you could apply this sort of button, you know, bootstrap component to an ahrefs as well. That is more than, you know, doable. So I'm just going to put hash here. I'm not going to, you know, navigate to any page, but you could do, I'm going to put a class. You just put btn, then btn-danger, for example, whatever theme you want. Um, put a roll uh, button. I'm going to say link. And the other one that we can have is an input. And this is a class. Again, this is not a HTML tutorial. And I do have an HTML tutorial series, so feel free to check that out. This is just showcasing that you can apply to anything that you would conventionally sort of use as a 
sort of a button feature in HTML, you can apply your button component from Bootstrap. Because there may be specific functionality from an input tag, from an ahref tag that you want, you can still maintain that. So type is going to be button. The type could be submit as well. You know, it's totally up to you. Value and put input button. Refresh. There we go. And they essentially like they look indistinguishable from the others, but they will have their own specific functionality. This being an ahref, this being an input tag so that's it if you have any questions feel free to pop me a message there will be a link to the source code in the description along with discord page and you know a few other useful links as well and i look forward to seeing you in the next video